Hello again gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Captain and today I'm going to be counting down my favorite top 10 XV games. Now I started occasionally doing my top 10 favorite games of some certain companies a while back. Uh, but I mostly stuck to some of the bigger companies who've uh, put out tons and tons of games. But recently, after filming a review to A Dance with Spiders, I realized that I had enough games from XV Games, even though they're a much smaller company than some of the ones I've done, that I've reviewed and played enough of their games that I could do a top 10 list with them, and I decided to do so. Uh, so XV Games, if you're not familiar, is an Italian game company that does a lot of small, like, pub games and also... Um, Games in bags to be like travel games, uh, very much focused in on smaller abstract games, tile laying games, things like that. Uh, and I've, I have done quite a few reviews of their games here on the channel. They've been sending me review copies at this point for quite some time. Uh, and I'm actually quite a fan of a lot of their games. So I was able to make a really cool top 10 list um, that actually does have most of the games they, they have released on it, but not all. Um, and these are all games I really like. So without any further ado, we're going to get right into it, and I'm going to count down my top 10 favorite games from XV Games. Number 10. So my number 10 is, I think, the first game I ever played from them, and it is Libraria. Uh, now, Library is a small box game. It is a small footprint game. It's definitely, like all of these, a game you could take to the pub or coffee house. This is one where you shuffle up the tiles and make this random bookcase. And then you and your opponent take turns placing gemstones on the intersections of the shelves. There are uh, horizontal shelves and vertical supports in this bookcase. And what you're trying to do is get the most gems surrounding parts of the bookcase with the most books in them. However, if you surround a spot with mice who eat the pages of the books, they will reduce the amount of points you get. So basically, at the end of the game, after you've placed gems at all of the intersections, you look at the intersections. You're like, okay, this intersection has two books in it. I have the most gems surrounding it. I get two points. But if that intersection has uh, two books in it, and you have all the intersections around it, you get a bonus point, and then you get three points. And then, again, of course, mice lose you points. This is a very clever little area control game uh, with a random board set up. So each, each board is different from the last. Uh, the game is never exactly the same. Uh, very fun, and that's why it is the number 10 game on my list. And also, I just, I really like the look of this game. I, I really like the mice, and I understand storyline-wise why they're negative points, but actually, I do find them incredibly cute. And uh, the first time I played it, I was a little sad that you don't want the shells with the mice. But that said, this is a fun game, and that's why Libraria is my number 10 favorite XV game. Number 9. My number 9 favorite XV game is a Japanese... Uh, style game which definitely feels like it owes a big part of its evolution of its design from the classic game of Go. Now uh, similarly this is a game about uh, trying to keep the ability to be open and moving um, constantly but it has this also this very strange win mechanic. The game I'm talking about is Kuni Umi. Uh, it is a game meant to represent the mythical creation of the islands of Japan. One of you plays water while the other plays land, and you move your pawns around. And what you're actually trying to do is you're trying to trick your opponent into capturing you, which is the weirdest win mechanic uh, probably of any of these games on my list. It's uh, got a really unique feel. The thing is, usually in a lot of abstract strategy games, you want to surround your opponent's pieces, but in this game, instead, you want your opponent to surround some of your pieces. If your opponent surrounds some of your pieces, you win. So you want to force them into a, a position where they have to essentially capture you, and if they do, you win the game. Uh, Kuniumi is, is a very brilliant design. It's a great abstract strategy game. It is a, a stone laying or tile laying kind of game, but the it's really all about that win condition for me. Kuniumi has this very unique feel to it um, that I don't think I have any other game in my collection that really quite captures what Kuniumi does and what it does well. So that is why it is my number nine favorite 
XV game. Number eight. My number eight favorite XV game is the only trick-taking game on this list. It is Vivaldi. So uh, my only complaint about Vivaldi is that it has an incredibly restrictive player count. You have to play it at exactly five players. Uh, that is a bit of an issue with me, but it's the only one. Because the entirety of the play style of this game, every time I've gotten five people together to play with it, this game is fantastic. It is a trick-taking game where... Uh, you are playing two teams uh, of three versus two. However, the person who's dealing is on a team with one other player and nobody knows who they are. It's based on the cards you're dealt. So there's bluffing in it where people are trying to throw suspicion around. Um, the person who is partnered up with the dealer wants to try to, you know, let them know, but doesn't want anyone else to know. So might want to cast suspicion on other people. There's a lot of stuff that's not in the rules that almost makes this game like a quasi-social deduction game in addition to a trick-taking game. It's not explicitly stated, but every time I've played it with people who really get it, who it really clicks with, they're like, oh, I see how this goes. And on top of that, it has this beautiful um, seasonal artwork. It's a gor gorgeous looking cards. It's a tiny little small box game. Very easy to take with you on a family trip anywhere. And yeah, and I, I really like Vivaldi. It's why it is my number eight favorite XV game. Number seven. My number seven favorite XV game is one that has won awards and should be surprised, uh, surprised to no one who's familiar with my review of it or the kinds of games that I like, that I really like this game a lot. And this is Mindleaf. Now, Mindleaf is a very interesting abstract strategy game, tile laying game, where you're trying to get lines of three or four tiles in a row, but every tile you play, it, it gives a rule for how your opponent must play their next tile. So there are some with like a circle around the leaf that you're playing down, means that they have to play adjacent to that tile. And then there's some with a broken circle that's larger, and that means they have to play not adjacent to the tile you just played. And there's some that have like a cross, which means they have to play in a straight line, either horizontally or vertically, uh, directly away from the tile you just played. And there's some that have an, like an X symbol on them that again is for, di they have to play diagonally away from the tile you just played. So it, you can be really tricksy with this, where if you can cause a situation to happen, where your opponent cannot play a tile legally, they lose their turn. And that, that's one of the big key strategies in this. And at the end of the game, you count up points uh, for every line of three or four tiles of your own you're able to get on the board. Um, in addition, uh, the designer, and this, this is not from XV Games, this is just an outside note, on the designer's website, they released some um, board tiles so you can make different shaped boards to play Mind Leaf with. Uh, which is really cool and actually, in my opinion, totally elevated this game. Uh, Mind Leaf is great. I really enjoy it and it is why it is my number seven favorite XV game. Number six. My number six favorite XV game uh, was part of a series, though XV only uh, did one of the games in the series. And it, in my opinion, because I've checked out some of the other games in the series, this is the best game in the series and I understand why XP Games wanted to do a travel game version of this game and this is Greener. Now uh, Greener is fantastic. It is a, a game using those kind of pyramid cones as playing pieces and you, you take turns jumping on other pieces. Now there are pieces on the board of your color, your opponent's color, and green. So you got white, black, and green and the thing is you can only move a stack of pieces if yours is on the top of that stack. At the end of the game, once no more moves can be made, you count up the number of green pieces in your stacks and your opponent's stacks and whoever has managed to capture the most green pieces wins the game of greener. Uh, the game standard uh, does a, a uh, random setup so, you, so every game can be different but there is online an alternate way to set up so that you can do a strategic setup and get even more tactical with how you set up your pieces and where they start on the board. Greener is very mind-bending and very brilliantly designed. And that is why uh, this little abstract game and bag is my number six favorite XV game. Number five. 
My number five favorite XV game is the game that inspired me making this list. It is A Dance of Spiders. This is the most recent game I've reviewed from XV Games, so feel free to check out the full review for a full breakdown on how to play the game and all the reasons that I really enjoy A Dance of Spiders. But the short version is that this is a, a total game about outmaneuvering your opponent and wanting to get into a position where your opponent cannot make a move. And once your opponent cannot make a move, you win. The whole of the game, once you're experiencing it, it takes about five minutes and then you clean up and play again. But it is a, a simple level of brilliance. I would say uh, when we were reviewing it, I believe Lynn had mentioned that she felt it was a little more advanced than checkers in regard to its strategy and complexity, but not more advanced than chess, uh, but so much faster than either one of those games. Uh, Dance of Spiders is a, a really cool game on a small board with very interesting strategy that's all about that end game because placing of the, of the webs really just blocks your opponent from moving and you're just trying to get into that position where your opponent cannot make a complete turn and then you win and then you play again. Plus on top of that, the theme with the spiders and everything is awesome. I love the theme. It feels um, very Anansi to me, which I love uh, the myths and stories around Anansi, the spider god. So I'm a big fan of this game, and that is why A Dance of Spiders is my number five favorite XV game. Number four. My number four favorite XV game is actually the last of the games in Bags line that appears on this list. So spoiler alert, the next few are actually uh, games, believe it or not, that come in boxes. But this is Wizard's Garden, my number four. Now, Wizard's Garden is a fantastic game uh, where you are placing tiles in order to flip the, the colors of the tiles on the, uh, on, that are already on the board that are adjacent to the new tile you place to the opposite side. And you're trying to do it to make lines of four tiles of the same color. So one side of the, the, the pieces are green, the other side is red. Uh, you and your opponent do not play any particular color. You're just trying to match four in a row to be able to remove them all from the board and take one of them and put it in front of you and at the end of the game have the most of those because each time you make a line, you get a point, basically. Uh, the way this game plays is absolutely brilliant. It's very strategic and it really makes you think ahead to future turns. I have never gotten tired of playing this game. I would play it any time. It is a brilliant abstract strategy game and that's why... Uh, Wizard's Garden, which has really become a bit of an addiction of mine, is my number four favorite XV game. Number three. My number three favorite XV game is a small box tile laying game that is uh, designed by the legendary Dr. Reiner Knizia. Uh, this is a game where you get a stack of tiles that look like old style maps. And at the beginning of the game, uh, you place the first tile out on the board and you're eventually going to make a grid of three by three tiles. And you, one of you, one of you, either you or your opponent, will decide to play representing land while the other represents playing water. And you draw tiles and you look to place them on the board and you're trying to make the largest connected area of the board of either land or water in your type. So you want, when the, when the full nine by nine grid has been made, you want the largest area if you're playing water to be water. Uh, and the thing about this is it's very strategic because you never know, you, you put out that first tile, but you don't know where on the 3x3 three three grid it's going to be. Because as you place tiles, once you get three wide, you know that's the full width of the board. Or at first you get three tall, you know that's the full height of the board, but you're not quite sure at the beginning how the board is going to end up looking. It's very interesting, very intelligent. The shuffle of, of the tiles and the different uh, order they come up and keeps every game different. This is an endlessly enjoyable game and that is why Charte is my number three favorite XV game. Number two. My number two favorite XV game is a sequel to a game I already knew I liked before I reviewed it. This is RRR or Religion and Regality Revolution, which is the sequel to The Religion and the Regality. Now, this is a abstract strategy card laying game where you're playing cards out on a three by three grid. Uh, I know I know what you're thinking. That's got some similarities to the last game, Chartea on Us, but this is totally different. The cards you play have a 
effects. You're playing them from your hand, and you've also got some neutral cards in this game that you can choose. And the thing is, you're trying to, to control the most territory. Though, in this version of the game, RRR, there's also the ability to control the most value of territory. Because you can either play it like RR did, where each territory is just worth one, or there are uh, uh, there is a version where the territories have numbers on them, and the higher numbers are more valuable. Now, you're going to play cards down on the different areas, and the cards you play will have effects of having adjacent cards or cards that are in a straight line away from it, sometimes either destroying some of them or having some of them change allegiance. The allegiance is represented by who they're facing. If the card is right side up for you, you control that card at the end of the game. So just because you played it doesn't mean you're going to control it forever. And you play until you fully fill up the grid. And once you do, whoever controls the most points worth of tiles wins the game of RRR. This game is absolutely brilliant. There's a ton of cards with a ton of different abilities and the neutral cards add in a huge amount of variety. And I love the addition of the numbers in this edition. Uh, with Again, with RR, it was just the, the largest number of, of, of land that you control, the largest number of spaces on the three by three grid. But with the addition of the numbers, you shuffle them up, change the board and it's different every time. And it really makes it different in regard to um, how different spaces on the 3x3 three three grid are worth different values. And that's why RRR made it all the way down to my number two favorite XV game. And now it is time for number one. Now my number one favorite XV game is another tile laying game. I just realized that my top three games are all tile laying games. Uh, but this is an absolutely brilliant positional strategy tile laying game um, that is was also published by Nestor Games, but XV Games did a tr like a, a travel game version with Japanese characters on it that I absolutely love, and this is Niju. Now, Niju is a tile laying game where every turn you place a tile down from your hand and are slowly building up the board, and each tile has a win condition on it. It has little symbols, little squares on the tile that show where adjacent to that tile on the game board, on the grid, you need to have other tiles of your own color, either white or black, to win the game. And what you have to do is you have to have one of your tiles out there get its win condition. If it does, you win. Now, that sounds very simple. And actually, yeah, the rules are very simple. But once you start playing, you realize this game is mind-bending. There is a crazy amount of variety from game to game. And it is absolutely brilliant. And I have had many times where I have played this game after playing this game, after playing this game as many as five, six, ten times in a row because of how much I enjoy the positional strategy of Niju. It is absolutely brilliant. It is a wonderful part of my collection, and I don't think I will ever be getting rid of it because I love it so much. And that is why Niju is my number one favorite XV game. So XV games have put out a ton of great games. I really was thinking about it as I was filming this video that I really enjoy every one of these games. And some of them are, you know, up there with some of my favorite abstract strategy games out there or some of my favorite tile laying games out there. Um, yeah, these are all great games and I would highly recommend checking them all out. I have done a review of every one of these if you'd like to search for it, if you want to see a fuller explanation of how to play any one of these games. But there you have it. Let me know what you think of my list. Are there any games that XP Games puts out that I didn't put on my list that you love. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video uh, and you'd like to see me do more like it, be sure to give it a like, share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the board game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game on.